Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see you all here this day. Um, I would ask that, um, well, you know, we got enough light, I guess, so let's rise as we're able and we'll begin worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the water of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took the light. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 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 Our opening hymn is number 376. <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. And also with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Eternal and all-merciful God, with all the angels and all the saints, we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he, were, he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the, the day, and you will be told that you are what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless. Because they heard the voice but saw no one, Saul got up from the ground and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. For they led him by the hand and, threw, and brought him to, into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither, and, and neither ate nor drank. Ate, neither ate nor drank, I'm sorry. Now well, there was a disciple in Damascus named Ammonus. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananus, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen he has seen in a vision a man named Ananus come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananus answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all the people invoke, all, and bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my people before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Annas went and entered the home. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother, Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus. And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue saying, he is the son of God. The words of the Lord. Here is the refrain for today. You have turned my wailing into dancing, into dancing. Let's all sing that together. You have turned my wailing into dancing, into dancing. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O oh Lord, Lord, my God, God I, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. 
you brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing Sing praise to to the Lord, Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. You have turned my wailing into dancing, into dancing. God's wrath is short, God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing, into dancing. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. You have turned my wailing into dancing, into dancing. And our second reading this morning is from the fifth chapter of Revelation. Then I looked... And I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing, To the one seated at the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. The words of our Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. After these things, Jesus showered himself, showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana of Galilee the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go out with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. 
Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to the, him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we raise to you our thanks and praise as we recall the never-ending love that you have shown us. You endured death on a cross that all might receive forgiveness from sin, and because Jesus rose from the dead, we too have a new life. Following in your way, may we recall all the marvelous things that you have shown us as we share of the abundance that is poured upon us, that we would share a meal with any that hunger and the others will recognize the love we have for each other, the world, and for Jesus. As we sing praises to you, amen. My dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus. Amen. The 60s and the 70s were uh, a fairly turbulent time in this country. Uh, I suppose there have been and 
uh, and still are uh, many difficult times uh, that have happened throughout all the ages, including our current age. During the decades that I had just mentioned, though, there was a group of young people who were going about uh, their day-to-day -day businesses uh, proclaiming peace and love. Now, I'm not referring at this time to that hippie movement. Rather, the group that was known as the Jesus Freaks. Perhaps you met a few of them along the way yourselves. These folks would uh, be at the airports, sporting events, or just walking around on city streets uh, armed with pamphlets containing Bible verses and uh, places where one could gather to hear these things. And they had this question upon their lips. Have you found Jesus? The question was an invitation uh, to get you into some sort of a conversation with them about uh, this uh, Jesus of Nazareth. They wanted to know whether or not you really did love Jesus, I suppose. Now, personally, I had a standard reply that I used uh, to redirect uh, that question, though. Uh, as I would tell them, I never lost him. You get lots of eyebrows raised and some amens and things like that. And it was kind of a wonderful thing, you know, but I'm afraid that uh, that uh, statement of mine was rather disingenuous. You know, as, as I can't be for certain that at that particular time that I had made Jesus the Christ number one in my life. Today we hear some similar stories from the ages past. We hear of Saul of Tarsus, a hard line religious type who does uh, whatever he can to disrupt and squash those that are following in Jesus' way. The uprising of uh, these Jesus followers had to be put asunder. You know, on, on his way then um, to punish these people, to perhaps imprison them or, uh, as he had permission to do, or even, even put them to death, he was out to get these followers of Christ. But along the way, he met the Lord. Blinded during his confrontation, Saul, who we often call Paul, which would be his Roman name, uh, he must learn then to see things differently. In his blindness, he has to learn how to recover his sight. Now we also then hear today of Peter, the rock, as they say. He meets the risen Christ on the lake shore and is questioned three times whether or not he loves Jesus. That must have been quite painful for him. A painful reminder of the three times that Peter denied knowing Jesus as he was heading towards the cross. He too needs to see things differently. You know, perhaps the hardest thing that these two men may have to do is to forgive themselves for their actions. Certainly Jesus forgives them as he calls both to go into the world proclaiming the love of Christ to all people. Perhaps that's our own biggest challenge also, to forgive ourselves as Jesus has already forgiven us, freeing us then to proclaim his love to this world. You know, as I go about my day to day, uh, and you probably hear the same things, uh, one of the most common comments that I hear is uh, <clears throat> during these pandemic years has been uh, how we would like to reconnect with each other in fellowship. I know our two congregations are, are doing such a thing, but 
for some it's been a struggle and it has been a long time coming. To share a meal, to have a conversation, and to gather with opened voices, to sing praise to our Creator for all that has been done for us. That's certainly a sentiment that we hear today from the book of Revelation also. That we continually worship Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thankful for the saving grace that has been poured upon us. So have you found Jesus, the great forgiver? You know, back in those 60s and 70s, I may have met the Reverend Dr. Mark Allen Powell as he might have approached me and said, have you found Jesus? I know I indeed have met him later in my life. And I'd like to share with you uh, today just a little excerpt from his, one of his books called Loving Jesus. <clears throat> so Dr. Powell says, in Loving Jesus, he asks a question similar to our text and presents a very concrete example of giving up part of our lives for Jesus. I remember being an outdoor, at an outdoor rock festival, he begins, and there was a young man with pink hair and multiple body piercings waving his hands above his head and singing of his love for Jesus. I talked to him afterward. I love Jesus so much, he said to me. Jesus is my life, man. My whole life. I asked him what church he was from. And he looked at me puzzled. No, man. No, I, I don't really do church, you know. It's Jesus. That's what it's about. Just Jesus. Goes on to say, a professor by the name of uh, Diane Jacobson uh, has a list as a in David Letterman type style, the top 10 reasons why Christianity, as opposed to just Jesus, is unattractive to people in their teens and 20s. The number one reason, she says, is it's boring. But why is that an issue now? I'm not sure that church has suddenly become significantly more boring than it used to be. I suspect, rather, that in an entertainment-saturated environment, for something to be boring is regarded as a much more serious offense than was once the case. So I remember talking to another Christian rock fan down in Austin, Texas. He was a Jesus freak just like I used to be and still want to be, and I envied him. He was just living in the joy of the Lord, reading his Bible every day and praying to Jesus and speaking in tongues and playing Christian rock on his stereo. When I asked him about church, he didn't write it off, but he did say that he hadn't been able to find a congregation where he felt like he fit in. The church where I am a member, he said, it's something uh, out of an old black and white TV show. You know, Ozzy and Harriet or Leave it to Beaver. Everybody dresses up in suits and they play this music that doesn't sound like anything on the radio and the preacher talks about things that have nothing to do with my life. And I don't know, it's just boring. So he said he didn't go. I asked him about finding a different church, but he didn't know about denominations and didn't really want to get into all the different doctrines and stuff, so he just didn't go anywhere. Maybe when I'm older, I'll get more out of it, he said. Or maybe the church will, you know, lighten up or something. Well, this time, I did give advice. I don't know if it was good advice or not, but I thought about it overnight, and then I got back to him. 
Do you love Jesus? I asked. Yes, I do. I love him with all my heart. Would you die for him? Yes, I would. You would die for him, but you won't be bored for him? And so I said, this is what I think the Lord wants you to do. I think that Jesus wants you to get out of bed every Sunday morning and go to the Ozzie and Harriet church and just sit there for one hour being bored. Do it for him. Call it bearing your cross, if you like. Just do it. Have you found Jesus? Church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, begotten and made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, and came out from heaven, was incarnate with the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified and for much of life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and according to the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this is the end of the land of the land. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son was worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the highest office. We believe in the one holy Catholic and now solid church. We do not know that the forgiveness of sins. We look for the 
Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray for, to the God of resurrection, for the church, for our bishops, Elizabeth and Catherine, for people in need and all of creation. Holy One of new beginnings, fill us with new life. Send us into the world as you sent your apostles, Philip and James, to invite people to come and see your wondrous acts in Christ, God, in your mercy. Amen. Revive ecosystems along coastlands that have been devastated by natural forces and human negligence. Reestablish plant and animal life that purifies air and water and that feeds humans and other living creatures. God, in your mercy. Sure. Accompany laborers who get little rest from their work. Give them hope when they struggle to produce what they need. Give all who labor fair treatment and just wages. God, in your mercy. Sure. Restore all people who cry to you for help. Turn their mourning into dancing. Clothe them with joy and put a testimony of healing and praise on their lips. Please remember those on our prayer list, our members and friends, and any of those that you may wish to bring forward now. God, in your mercy. Be present to faithful ones who are persecuted, persecuted for following you. Sustain them by your faithfulness and give them strength in the name of Jesus, God, in your mercy. Hear Join our voices with angels, creatures, and all the saints in praising Christ and bestowing upon him all blessing and honor and glory. Reveal Christ's glory to us and through us in, your, in our worship. God, in your mercy. Hear into your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And, and also with you. Please share that peace. God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. and our joy 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true paschal lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. God most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation. Hear us as we praise, call us to your table, grant us your life. When the world was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them into freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath, and the psalmist cried out for healing, and full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. As he was born among the poor, he lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. 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 O God, you are breath. Send your spirit on this meal, O God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself, O God, you are wine. Warm our hearts and make us one. O oh God, you are fire. Transform us with hope. O oh God, most majestic. O oh God, most motherly. O oh God, our strength and our song. You show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit to our risen Savior, life in you now and forever. Amen. Amen. So Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen.
seeks the Lord, rejoice and hear the name of Christ. Send us with your promises and lead your people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living uh, cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah.
Okey then. <laughs> I think if you wanted to eat today, you have many opportunities. There is, of course, a uh, uh, down at the uh, Catholic Church in Ishpeming, they're having a, a fundraising breakfast. I think it ran it runs until noon to, or one today, uh, where there are actually free will offerings that are going uh, to the people in Ukraine. Uh, I also noticed, I think, well, didn't I see a sign by the lake, maybe, that uh, Nagani's having a pancake breakfast today. So you know what? If you are hungry, then you may be fed this day. I'm pretty sure of it. Um, other than that, I think things are as uh, printed. Uh, we do have uh, our assembly people uh, uh, signed up and ready to go. Uh, there is, in the a little yellow sheet here, Tells you the different workshops that are available to all, free of charge. You just have to pay your internet bill, I guess. But uh, you can go on, uh, the website is listed there, and those workshops will be available the week of Synod Assembly. Uh, what else we got going on here? The Feeding America truck, I think we've got posters around on that one. Uh, that will be coming to Nagani High School on the 4th. So I guess that's pretty soon, that's Wednesday. So again, if you're hungry, you're able to be fed uh, this week, so. Are there any other announcements? Yeah, Pastor, the, our annual meetings on the 15th of March, so our worship services will be held in the fellowship hall, and man, I'm sorry, uh, from nine to 10 and meetings at 10 o'clock, okay? One more uh, announcement for next week. Uh, we will be filming like we normally do. It will be our son Alex filming. Uh, we, Patty and I are going to be downstate and we'll be coming back that early evening. And that will be when I can get to the video itself and then <laughs> upload it to YouTube. So anyway, it will be, it'll be out like usual just late in the day. All right. Well, you are visitors that morning. No, well, no. Mm -hmm. We would be quite empty without you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're still members. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. <laughs> I think you are, Becky. That all being said then, go in peace, share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.